everyone. Today I have a very exciting video for you guys. I know that I say that every single time. Every single time. But it's true. So as you can tell by the title of this video, it is a haul. However, I was not kidding when I said mini. It's actually not really a haul at all to most people, but it is for me. And so I called it that. No shame. Excuse any hammering or constructive construction sounds that you hear because they are building a house across the street. Sorry about that. So the um, other week, actually, I've had these items for a while now, but I wanted to review them first. So I am doing a haul and review. So I saved my Ulta bag. How cute. I just, I love it. Also, it's adorable. But I saved it for you guys so that I could put it in my thumbnail. But anyways, I feel like I am chattering way too much. So the other week I went to Ulta and I had some birthday money so I was able to get some makeup things and I had a lot of fun. And I also went to Ross but I don't have my Ross bag anymore, sorry about that. And I got some makeup things and then one of the items in here is from my birthday and it's just super cool so I thought that I would include it in here. So the first item that I'm going to talk to you guys about is the Makeup Revolution Iconic Pro 1 palette. Um, I know a lot of other YouTubers have said that this is almost an exact dupe for the Lorac or Loric or however you pronounce it, Pro 1 palette. And honestly, I don't know because I don't have that palette to compare. But I do, I don't know, I have some mixed feelings with this palette. Uh, my first reaction, of course, was, you know, oh my gosh, you know, this was only $12. The packaging is a very sleek and pretty. It's very heavy duty. It's not gonna, you know, get banged up anytime soon. It has just a regular clasp right here and a plastic sheet to tell you all of the names of the shadows. As soon as I got home, I did a bunch of swatches and they were so pigmented and so creamy and buttery and just they glided on and I was so impressed. But when I put them onto my eye, I noticed a lot of fallout with some of the lighter shadows and they just weren't as pigmented as I had really hoped. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do some swatches now and show you guys. probably tell not all of the shadows were created equal. I was really excited when I saw this palette because on the outside of the box it's got a very small sticker that shows you the shadow colors and honestly the selection of colors looked totally gorgeous and I was most excited about you know the gold shade which is called Getter and stage that really beautiful kind of coppery red color and honestly they just were not as beautiful on the eye in compared to when swatched they go on the arm very pigmented and bright and they seem like they'll show up really really well but then when you put them on your eye at least for me without a primer because primer is expensive and I feel like honestly a good eyeshadow should not need a primer. It just did not show up at all. I'm wearing the gold today actually, the color Getter on my eye right now in the very center. And I put it on a couple of hours ago and as you can tell it it's just not as pigmented as it was in the pan or even swatched on the arm. And I used my finger to try and get more pigmentation and went over it a bunch of times and it just does not show up as pretty pretty as I was expecting. When I apply Getter to the lid when it is wet. So you do get a much more intense pigment, but mind you, I completely saturated this shadow and I had already put some of this on my eye earlier today with a wet brush 
and it did not show up very well, so I layered it again with a wet finger this time. There is getter and also stage when applied wet. So as you could tell, some of the shadows, especially the lighter ones, just didn't show up at all. They were super chalky and um, I think the ones that I was most disappointed with were definitely Need and Dawn. Those two shades are a very pretty light baby pink and I'm not exactly sure, like a glittery nude on the bottom row of the palette. Those two right there just don't work. I tried using them as a highlight for the brow bone, I tried putting them in my inner corner, and honestly they just did not show up. The ones that I was most impressed with, and I feel like you get the best shadows out of the whole palette, were definitely the darker matte shades. And even these last couple of shimmer shades on the bottom as well. The top row is all mattes, and the bottom is all shimmer. And this half of the palette is just excellent. I didn't really have as many problems, except for a little bit with stage. It went onto the eye almost like a really dark red-brown, but all of the other darker shades were just phenom phenomenal. Um, however, the ones that I was most looking forward to using were the lighter ones, and in that category I was disappointed. I do really enjoy Enigma mixed with Ghost for a base all over for the eye. That lasts really well, it goes on really smooth, and is a great base for the eye. It helps all of my other eyeshadows blend really beautifully, and I've been using Must and Fade for really great transition colors. Those, honestly, are the most used ones out of this whole palette that I've been reaching for the most, just because myself, like, I don't really enjoy really dark eyeshadows. I'm not that skilled when it comes to a smoky eye. So I think that I would honestly recommend this palette only for beginners if you're wanting to experiment with different eyeshadow colors if maybe you really can't afford the $44 Lorac palette. I mean I still, don't get me wrong, I love this palette because it's good for a very natural, soft, everyday look but you're just not going to get some of those crazy colors that you might see in the Lorac palette. They're not going to pop as much as you might expect. Another thing that I really was kind of annoyed at, the brush is excellent for a drugstore brush. It's got a really beautiful design, very sleek and black. It's got a fluffy end and a flat end. This side is for packing on eyeshadow onto the lid and this one is for blending into the crease. But when I first purchased this brush, it said Makeup Revolution right here and after only a couple of days, it had completely worn off. So the paint was cheap. But everything else about the packaging was really well made. I've not had any shedding with this brush, and I was honestly surprised that a drugstore makeup palette even came with an actual brush, because most of the time you just see those little crappy sponge applicators that just don't work at all. And the Lorac palette actually does not come with a brush, so that was really cool. Overall, my favorite colors out of the palettes were out of this palette were definitely the darker ones and the mattes. Some of the shimmers were kind of disappointing, but overall I still enjoy this just for me as a beginner in makeup and to experiment with. It's only $12. I mean, you can't really beat that. I kind of cracked the code, or at least this is my theory. If you look at some of them, not really so much with Ghost and Need, those don't really tie together as much, but on the top and bottom, the names tend to correspond. Luna, Dawn, Luna is the moon, and then it, you know, changes to Dawn with the sun. Must get her, get her, must get her, must get her. And then you have Fade and Two Gray, Fade to Gray and drama and stage, obviously those two tie together, and then afflicted, addicted sound the same, and pitch player is actually a sport in England, and this is 
the Makeup Revolution London palette. So I just thought that that was quite clever. So you do get a lot out of this palette. You get 16 shades for $12 and a really nice brush and an excellent mirror. This is glass. Hello! And it's really, really good quality and it does not warp the image at all. So overall, I would purchase this again. Yeah, a couple of the shades are disappointing, but it's a drugstore product and oh well. So I rambled a lot on that one, sorry, but the next one I'm not going to talk too much about. This is the Ellen Tracy Matte to Shimmer Bronzers. It's a four shade bronzer palette and it comes with a brush again. And the packaging is very large, but it does come with a lot of product. These two darker ones are the matte bronzers and then these two kind of pinky shades are very, very shimmery on the end. It has a magnetic clasp and the brush looks like this it's just your standard contouring brush so I found this one at Ross and I'd been looking for some bronzers to experiment with like I said I am very new to makeup and I want to try out all the different crazy products that you see and I'm actually wearing a mixture of these two shades, the matte shades on my cheeks, on my cheekbones today. And overall, if you go with a light hand and blend it out, you get a very subtle, natural, bronzy glow. And it does do a fairly good job contouring. I don't know how it's going to show up on camera, but in person, it's very natural looking. It doesn't look like I'm orange or, you know, have a harsh line. This does apply the bronzers fairly well. I just sculpt out the lines that I want and put a little on my forehead and sometimes on my chin if I'm feeling fancy and it's small enough to even contour your nose if you're careful. And then I just use a fluffy brush to blend out the lines and that works really well. I'm going to swatch them now for you guys and overall I'm pretty happy with this because it was only $5 at Ross. So honestly, you get a ton of product in this palette. It's rather bulky and pretty large. So honestly, unless you have like a massive pocketbook, you're not going to be able to carry this around with you. But for the price and for the amount of product you get in here, it's well worth it. This is not going to be, you know, super, super pigmented. It's not going to be crazy. And for my skin, I get kind of tan in the summer, but usually I'm fair to medium when it comes to like foundations and BB creams and things like that. And this shows up pretty well on me without being overly orange. You do have to be careful though, if you put on a whole lot, you will look slightly like Donald Trump. That was my mistake the first time I applied it, and sadly I did not take a picture because I was too embarrassed and I went and washed it off immediately. So the first two shades in the palette are these really gorgeous. They say bronzers, but honestly, I would never bronze my face with these because they're just so shimmery. You can hardly tell in the pan from just looking on the camera, but in person, these things are like glitter. They're very, very, very shimmery and they're kind of powdery, but the other two bronzers, they're very nice in the formula. They don't powder as much, so they're better for contouring, but these first two shades, honestly, would be kind of neat for me. Even highlighting, and I have used those two as highlighters before, but like I said, they are quite powdery, and they don't really show up as a lot of color on the skin, but more like glitter. So I don't use those as much. I do really enjoy these last two bronzers. They are very, very matte super pigmented. My favorite has to be the darker one because it's the least powdery out of all four shades. But honestly, $5.99 at Ross, I could not be happier with this palette, honestly. It was so cheap and it has allowed me to experiment a lot and you can even use these as eyeshadows. They're so huge, you know, you're not going to feel like you're running out too soon.
ever. So this was an amazing find and I'm super happy with it. If you do come across this, definitely pick it up. So the last item in this haul is something that I got for my birthday and it is a set of brushes. So before I started really getting into makeup, I only had one brush which was featured in my Get Ready With Me video and it was this e.l.f. I believe it's called e.l.f. Precision Brush and it's just a little fluffy brush. It's not bad quality, it's pretty, you know, durable, especially it was like 89 cents I think. and. This was the only blush that I had. I was dipping into like some pink eyeshadows and using this to apply them as blush. I was, you know, making do with what I had. So for my birthday, my mom gave me some brushes and I wanted to feature them here because I figured I got all of these products around the same time anyway and it kind of ties in with the whole makeup theme. So it, they come in this really gorgeous, super cute little kind of burlap sack slash plastic bag or whatever you would call this container. It's fairly big, about the size of my head, and it comes with three really nice brushes. And honestly, I'm never going to use this bag just because if I take the brushes out, you can see it is so tight. This plastic does not, like come out very far and it ends up squishing the brushes. But the brushes themselves are really amazing. I think it was Rugged Warehouse and they were on sale. So for the price, these are absolutely incredible. They're from the brand Jackie and Lauren. And they are wooden with, I think, synthetic bristles. And they're so incredibly soft. It's mesmerizing. I could literally like touch this to my face all day long and they smell good too. I don't know what that's all about, but they do. So the first brush is a blush brush and I really love the font of the text on these brushes. It's kind of like typewriter style. The entire aesthetic, you could say, of these brushes is just so cute, honestly. Like, even if they sucked, I would still use them. But luckily for me, they are wonderful. I use this for applying my blush and also blending my bronzer and applying powder as well if I do apply powder that day. It's just an excellent, excellent, excellent powder brush. It's huge compared to some other drugstore powder brushes that I have seen. And the colors are just so pretty. It goes from white or a pale cream to this kind of uh, light reddish pink right here and then to a dark brown with some almost purpley notes in it. You can tell in person and it is so soft. Again, I'm saying it again. Wonderful. So I really love this one. It is my favorite out of all three brushes. The second one I don't like as much. It is the foundation brush. And it looks like this. It's kind of a little, almost like a filibuster. I think that's what it's called. It's one of those paintbrush looking ones. It's very flat. And for foundation or even BB cream, honestly, I find this is kind of annoying to apply because it does go on quite streaky and I find I just blend it out with my fingers anyway. I would rather, for foundation, use kind of like a smaller, thicker, almost like a small powder brush, um, maybe tapered or something. This is kind of annoying, but the quality is still good. However, with this brush, I find it's... it's the worst quality out of all of them. The bristles on top of m at least mine, I don't know if all of them are like that, but with this one it seems like the bristles are kind of sharp and not as soft on the very tip and that's kind of annoying especially for the delicate areas around your eyes because it does have taller bristles right here and shorter bristles in the front and they kind of poke at you. So not my favorite but still it's a good quality for the price. And the last brush is really, really wonderful, and it is this really gorgeous, sorry, I'm flicking the powder out of it, 
um, so you can see the color of the bristles because I did use this for my eyeshadow today. And it is the eyeshadow brush. And honestly, this is so wonderful. It's really, really good size as well for bristles. I feel like I can pack powder onto my lid really easily with this. I usually use this for my base color and sometimes for maybe the inner half of my eye if I'm going to be packing on like some glitter or something and I don't want to use my finger. But other times when I use like my crease and all those things, I will use a smaller fluffier brush, but definitely for all over the lid, this is an excellent brush to use because it is so big and you can cover a lot of space with this. It's also good for highlighting the brow bone I found because it's just very smooth. Again, super soft. It's almost like a smaller version of the foundation brush, but it's so soft. I don't have any problems with this one at all. It definitely, absolutely like, t holds a lot of eyeshadow in here. So when you do put this on your eye, you can tell a difference than if you're just using your finger or a cheaper brush. And I'm going to show you that right now with the Revolution palette. So I'm going to take this color over here. It's a dark brown. I believe it's called Drama. And just going to get some on my finger and swatch it for you on my hand to show you the difference between the brush and no brush. So, and honestly, these two, my finger and the Jackie and Lauren brush, have the most pigmentation. Hello everyone! So, I totally forgot that I was filming a video. Well, I didn't. My camera died earlier, so I had to stop filming and go charge it and I was editing, and then it was really late, and I ate dinner and got ready for bed, and then I forgot that I had not done my goodbye. So, I hope that you guys enjoyed the haul, and I had so much fun filming it. Please comment down below and tell me what your favorite item was, or tell me what you would like to see in a video next. Recommend products for me to try. Um, I would love to hear any new video recommendations as well because it's really hard coming up with ideas and I don't know even how you guys like them because so far I don't think I've gotten very many comments so I would love to hear from you um, but thank you so much for watching and give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed and I will continue to make videos for you guys anyways even if you don't because I like them so thank you again and goodbye